and greetings. Happy Wednesday. Glad to be back home. As beautiful and gorgeous as Naples, Florida is. I am Steve Dace. He's Todd Erzin. He's Aaron McIntyre. You may not see much of him on camera again today as we are training Victoria, our former intern, uh, to get ready for uh, Aaron's imminent paternity leave with Bella Dew in early April with their second child. But nevertheless, you will hear plenty from Aaron today. Uh, you're also going to hear plenty about our friends over at First Cup Coffee Company right now uh, because they are one of the proud sponsors of this program and they make some fantastic coffee while also supporting your values. There's a flavor for every freedom-loving American. Uh, They do it as as fresh as they possibly can. The roast dates right there in every bag. They'll ship it to you within days of roasting as well. Uh, And if you want to get a 10% discount, go to firstcup.com and use my last name, Dace, as your promo code. Promo code Dace at firstcup.com. And if you subscribe, you'll get an additional 10% off for the life of the order at firstcup.com and use the promo code Dace. Before we get in to the show, I just want to extend a thank you uh, sincerely to uh, Governor Ron DeSantis and his team uh, for hosting our family down there in Florida for an event on uh, my new children's book, Why Easter? And, you know, now that it's Holy Week, I, I feel a little weird about promoting the book. You know, is it tacky? So I've not mentioned it all that much. Did you see Trump produ- uh, promote his new American Bible? Then so it's tacky, is you, what you're telling no, me. No, the, you haven't come. It's you're, close to no? approaching tacky. There's a bar. You're not even close to it. Uh, <laughs> and we're off. Anyway, it is still out at Amazon if you want a copy. Um, Thank you guys uh, for making it a successful launch here uh, this month. It's been fantastic. And uh, please keep leaving us five-star reviews as well at Amazon if you don't mind. But uh, we had a, I mean, the the governor kind of turned the tables and interviewed me for about a a little more than an hour. And we had a, a, a pretty big crowd at a beautiful church. First Baptist in Naples, Florida is, well... Pretty much everything in Naples, Florida, is first class and done well. I mean, it is a gorgeous community. Um, I've not had a Palm Sunday view like I had from uh, the uh, the patio of my Holiday Inn hotel room <laughs> there in downtown Naples. It was something else. Uh, but in, in the crowd, I won't out people. We had a professional UFC fighter in the crowd. Uh, we had a professional Major League Baseball player in the crowd. Several office holders were in the crowd. Active or retired? Uh, Active. 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 Yeah. And uh, um, I won't say anything more, you know. I mean, he's, he's, we got into, him and I had a very interesting conversation about some of the things that, uh, that he has done in the majors to push back on uh, some of the uh, rainbow jihad stuff. Um, But uh, I mean, it was just a fantastic event. And uh, I mean, it was really well done. And the governor asked very good questions. He did. And, 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 and here's the thing, too, is I don't know, and, and it's because of my answers, this thing may never see the light of day. I don't, I don't know. I mean, if it, it, the answers I gave are not anything different than what you hear on this show on a daily basis. Just a little bit different when the most high-profile governor in America is sitting next to you, you know. But he asked me the kinds of questions that indicated he was not looking for a... Uh, You know, let's just have a, you know, Jesus loves me conversation and check the box and, uh, you know, move on. I mean, he, he asked the kinds of questions that'll get you the, uh, the full, uh, unadulterated, unedited, no chaser version of the Steve Day show. And that audience got it. (laughs) So, uh, props to the governor, uh, for asking those questions. And we had a great time and, uh, enjoyed it quite a bit and, but it's good to be back home. Uh, United made their, did their very best to not make that happen yesterday, but six hours later, we eventually made it. I, uh, you guys will get a kick out of this. The last delay we had in O'Hare, which is one of the most dreadful places on earth, frankly, uh, but the last uh, the delay we had in O'Hare, just as we were about to board, all right, so groups one and two board, we're group three, we're about to hop on, Okay. Because I'm the kind of guy that if it's like more than an, you know, if it's in more than an, you know, an hour or so flight, 
then I'll pay extra for like, you know, better leg room and priority boarding. But, it, you know, it's, it's, it's less than an hour, you know, I'll sit middle seat in the very back and save my money, you know. So we're, we're boarding towards the end. They board half the half the plane. Then they shut down the boarding. Are you guys ready for this? This is like right out of the headlines because the mechanic was concerned about a malfunctioning door on the plane. I mean, how many of these stories have we heard in the last couple of months? Like right? I told you before the show, though, it's better that he was concerned than, ah, it's, it's probably Yeah, I think it, it, you'll be all right. Yeah, especially if you're in the very back of the plane, more than likely. Yeah, so, uh, but we finally made it home. It was a great trip, but uh, it's good to be back. Good to see you guys. Good to see all of you again as well. Coming up on the show today, we'll be joined later by the prophet of woe and lamentation. Daniel Horowitz will be here with us. Uh, we will play buy, sell, or hold coming up at the bottom of the hour. But before all of that fun and frivolity, let us begin as we always do with Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away brought to you by her. Do you, do you not like her? I don't know her. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has his running mate. It's entrepreneur and investor and liberal philanthropist Nicole Shanahan. I'm so hopeful for this. I hope you all understand now what has brought me into politics. <laughs> it? And, it, and what, in this moment, I, I am leaving the Democratic Party. <laughs> The vision we share is a vision of national healing. It is an America that leads the world no longer through force of arms, but through the power of example. It is an America that wages peace through diplomacy. It is an America that had, had become the sickest industrialized country on the earth and turned it around. Okay then, that didn't last long. NBC has reportedly cut ties with former RNC chairwoman Rona Romney McDaniel. The company's chairman said in a statement, quote, no organization, particularly a newsroom, can succeed unless it is cohesive and aligned. Over the last few days, it's become clear that this appointment undermines that goal. Learning Chinese today, today's phrase is, what does cohesive and aligned mean? Meanwhile, in Baltimore, nobody's still quite sure what caused a mammoth shipping vessel to slam into one of the support pilings for the massive Francis Scott Key Bridge, which sent it crashing into the inner harbor. Six people are presumed dead, and the ramifications of the collapse will be felt immediately crippling trade in and out of Baltimore seaports, and for years to come, as such a massive structure will take much time to rebuild. My Pillow CEO Mike Lindell is sadly being evicted from one of his Minnesota pillow warehouses after the property's landlord showed the company owes more than $200,000 in rent. A Scott County, Minnesota judge on Tuesday said she'll approve the landlord's request to vacate the property after at least four default notices were sent to the Minnesota-based pillow maker over the last six months. Meanwhile, on Wall Street, shares of Donald Trump's Trump Media and Technology Group surged as much as 59 percent this week in their Nasdaq debut, lifted by the former president's supporters and providing him a potential windfall as he grapples with the costs of several legal cases. In the aftermath of the TMTG thing going public, Trump's net worth reportedly soared by nearly $4 billion, making him once again one of the 500 wealthiest people in the world. Also in Trump world. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood, who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents, yes, the Constitution. Moving on, Germany's public health agency said that lockdowns can cause more harm than good in documents released after a long legal battle. The Robert Cook Institute raised concerns in December of 2020 that shutting down society could lead to increased child mortality, citing examples in Africa. The Institute also disagreed with making some masks mandatory because of a lack of evidence. Again, those are statements from Germany's public health agency from late 2020 just now revealed. And finally, the movie Late Night with the Devil is a story about a fictional late night TV host from the 70s who, in an effort to draw ratings for his struggling show, interviews a woman who claims she'd been possessed by Lucifer himself. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for a live television first as we attempt to commune with the devil. What's actually interesting here, though, is despite the film's opening weekend drawing nearly $3 million, its Sunday earnings, Sunday, was exactly $666,666. Can't make this stuff up. And that's what happened while we were away.
Come on, man. How much do you think they really hit that? Do you think it was maybe like 665,912 and they just thought, let's just round it up? I kind of For marketing? Because I kind of think that's probably what happened. I kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think it means, though, if that's marketing nowadays? Think that's even a good thing? I don't think that's marketing at all. Yeah. You, uh, uh, Aaron's Montage brought to you by our friends over at My Patriot Supply. You know, based on the fact we're marketing the fact that we are now earning 666 in our movies these days. You may feel as if, you know, we've got harbors where hundreds, if not thousands of ships parade through on a perennial basis that apparently have no contingency feed for what happens when one of them has the power go out. I don't know. Maybe you're thinking, I want to get prepped just in case. If that's you, My Patriot Supply is where you want to go. They've been here for you since 2008, helping millions of American families prepare for the uh, uncertainty of the future. Uh, You can choose the three-month emergency food kit. That's 22 food and drink varieties. That's breakfast, lunch, dinner, even drinks and snacks. So no food boredom and all the nutrition you need. 2,000 plus calories, all sealed inside ultra-durable four-layer packaging. Uh, These last for up to 25 years with proper storage. So stock up right now at preparewithdace.com. You'll get each kit for $200 off. Protect yourself and your people. Get your kits at preparewithdace.com. And there's fast and free delivery as well. Preparewithdace.com is where you want to go. That's preparewithdace.com. We're going to save the harbor story for now. Um, It's early yet. We're going to have it as one of the topics in the rundown uh, for the Dace group on Friday. You guys okay with that? And let's just see what, if any other news comes out about it between now and this time on Friday morning. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. There are other, there are two, well, let me, let me just say this. There's three things I want to address out of Aaron's montage. One of them very briefly. If you had, I mean, sacrificed at great cost, including your own personal self-made fortune on behalf of your belief in a friend. And your, and your friend's personal fortune had ballooned to over $6 billion in net worth. And you're facing eviction notices. Mike Lindell has, what did he say? He owes something uh, like $8 million to Fox News. and Some ungodly yeah, sum. Yeah, in, in advertising dollars that he can't pay. All right. Um, he, had to, he lost his previous attorneys because he couldn't pay those bills. I mean, this, this, this guy had, uh, you know, five years ago, Mike Lindell was a universally beloved figure both in American commerce and really in American evangelicalism with an incredible just story of, of, of you know, God's miracle working in his life from drug addict to, you know, really to, I mean, he's a mogul, right? Now he's a guy that Really, and I'm not, I'm not saying this is tr- good or I agree with it. I'm just saying it is true. There is only a certain kind of evangelical church or evangelicalism that would embrace him. He's a pariah in the business community. You could have bought a my pillow at every major big box chain in America five years ago. Now you can't. He's been exiled, shunned. And... And the person you did this for, the, the cause, he's the cause you did this for, and you just found out he just hit his all-time highest net um, ranking in personal wealth. Wouldn't you kind of feel like, hey, bro, can you, can you spare a rent payment? You know what I'm saying here? I do, but Mike forgot a really important thing. That he's an addict because he's still behaving like an addict. That's the problem. I mean, he overcame drugs, but you are looking now, It's you connect the dots going back. He just can't stop, won't stop. I mean, even if a cause was just early on, he just kept hit me, hit me, hit me. These are the, he's just, he's showing the behaviors of an addict and it's killing him again for the second time in his life. Uh, it was, if it was, if, if, if I had... Uh, lay down over railroad tracks and sacrificed 
at least a, a good portion of everything I built for somebody um, because I believed in them. And they had the means by which to at least avoid me from being publicly humiliated, uh, let alone um, bankrupt. I, I, I kind of would feel like I don't even have to ask. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of feel like I wouldn't even have to ask. Oh, maybe he'll find the answers to this in the Trump Bible. Yeah, I mean, I just... Heaven forbid anything like that happened to you guys. And we were in good standing and still in the trenches and arena together. I mean, I, I, I would hope you wouldn't even feel like you even had to ask if there was something I could do, you know? But... Ask not what your Trump can do for you, I guess. Here's what he can do for me. Better win this damn election. Better win the election. Okay, better win. That's something he can do for us. Because we can't afford any more of this. Let's get to the other two topics I want to address. I want to start with RFK Jr. And... Again, if you're new to the show, maybe you don't know this. I have been saying from the very beginning, at least as things currently stand now, that barring information I don't know forthcoming, my plan is to vote for Trump for president. Because the place the country was in the first three years he was president compared to what's happened to the country in the three years since he left are dramatically worse and... I just think he's not a great human being, but he's a lot better at the job than the person that is currently inhabiting it. So I don't say this as someone who was looking at RFK Jr. as a voter. I, I say this as just someone who was looking at him as an American. The reality is we, we need something in this country, at least in terms of presentation, what he has been presenting even if ideologically I have some fundamental disagreements with him on issues that matter greatly. But, but he's the only person running on a national ticket since really 2016 when Trump ran on Make America Great Again. So what's that eight years ago? You know, it's a lot of water under the bridge and the current media climate and we have with news cycles that last 15 minutes. Eight years is a long time, right? So it's really been since Trump ran on Make America Great Again that we have had someone attempt to run for the presidency on an aspirational and inspirational message. That we are better and can be and have been better than this and therefore can be again. That's really the core of Bobby Kennedy's message, right? Fair? Sure. He's one of the few people I've met in recent years that I thought just instantly commanded my respect and I found to be instantly impressive. That being said, this this vice presidential choice is a disaster. I mean, this woman is this woman is a literal druid. I don't I, I'm, I'm not that's not an embellishment like a literal druid who goes to wicker man celebrations. OK, I can't make this stuff up and I didn't. And right? you don't have to. You don't have to. Because here it is. This is like if Thomas Eagleton and Marianne Williamson had a daughter, it would be Nicole Shanahan. Who's Thomas Eagleton? George McGovern once tried to run on some of the exact same themes Bobby Kennedy's talking about now. And he made his running mate someone that he didn't vet and found out he had, had electroshock therapy. So there was that. Okay. We're all going to need electroshock. Therapy and then Marianne Williamson, this. all the druid stuff, the, the wacky, you know, new age stuff. She's right out of the same playbook. And I've seen some people like our, you know, our good friend Jordan Schacht will say, hey, he just chose her because he's the biggest bundler she, he, that he has. He can, she can come up with the money to put him on the ticket. I agree that that's the likely reason he did this. That's not a selling point. That's actually pretty swampy, frankly. There's, there's really nothing principled about, let me put a whack job on my national ticket because they can cut me a check. That's, that's at, I mean, that's about as swampy as it gets. Like, I would, I'd be actually more comforted if I really thought that's where he was. 
I still wouldn't vote for it, but at least it's like a, it's like a moral consistency. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I actually think it actually undermines them all the more that I don't think having spent time with him uh, for an entire day, eight hours in pretty close quarters, getting to know the guy. I don't think that's where he's at. And so I think he cynically just put her there to write him a check. To me, that's actually worse. I can get that. I can get that. I can get that swampy crap anywhere. I, anywhere else, man. That goes, you can't go against your own brand. There's nothing unifying about this. This chick is, is, is five minutes away on, from being in the Earth Day compilation that Aaron plays on this show every year, banging, you know, the bongas, okay, and screaming at trees, okay? The old growth! That's who this chick is. <laughs> okay, and, 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 well, Steve, it's great because now they'll just take votes away from Democrats. That's true, but it's not actually as good as you think. Here's why. This is now very clearly just a, 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 an, a, an idealistic left-wing protest campaign. This is very clearly now just a better version of what Ralph Nader did to the Democrats in 2000. The problem with, with that on our side is, if you want to win this election, is that he's marginalized himself. I know it's going to seem counterintuitive, but hang with me for a second. His best chance to disrupt the election for the result, if you agree with me, that we want, his best chance was actually to be seen as something better and bigger, a unifying force. He could not, he could not possibly win without a, an act of God. And so as, as long as he looked like he was a unifying force, then probably neither side could afford to go all in on him completely because you're not sure what the ratio is he's taken away from you and somebody else. And then in the end, he probably takes 60, 40 away from Biden, I would guess. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but somewhere in there. But now that he's marginalized himself as to, you know, uh, we're just, uh, you know, we're the, we're, the, we're the populist Bernie Sanders progressive pissed off folks who actually believe Bernie Sanders' agenda. Yeah, you know, at this point now, he's going to take like 95% away from Biden and five from Trump. But understand where all those voters live in places like Oakland, California, Massachusetts. We're not winning those places. So Bobby Kennedy Jr. getting 10% of the vote in Massachusetts does what to the Electoral College, Todd? No. Nothing. Does absolutely nothing. He ain't good. He could get, I could see this ticket getting 10% in Massachusetts. Sure. sure. I could see it getting 10% in California. I could see that too. We're back to the black vote. Yep. I could see it getting 10% in New York. I could see it getting 10% in Vermont. I can see it getting 10% in Connecticut where these kinds of people live, right? I could see it. Is it getting, is it going to get 10% in Georgia? No. No. Is it going to get 10% in Arizona? No. Is it going to get 10% in Pennsylvania? No. Now he's a, he still has to get on the ballot in these places, by the way. He's got four months to do that. Well, Stevie's going to run as a libertarian candidate. Well, that convention is two months from, I think, today. So clock is ticking. That's when they're going to have their nominee. Okay? But, um, and if he's their nominee, then he'll be on the ballot in these places. But you have to understand, Democrats, the, the, the protest vote in places where the people think their votes are going to count is not going to be that high for this ticket. And whatever it is, well, Steve, two or three percent that, 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 that Biden doesn't get in Arizona, that would have been the difference in 2020. Correct. Except now you're probably looking at two, three, four, five percent of Republicans in Arizona not voting for Trump this time. That kind of offsets that. You see what I'm trying to say? You're going to have some form of an offset of Republicans that don't want to vote for Trump again. They're going to somewhat offset. I don't think I, I, I'll bet you Bobby Kennedy's not polling double digits by the end of the summer. Now, I do think this increases the odds we'll get a debate this fall. I still don't think we'll have one. But one of the two reasons I had is they'd have to include Bobby Kennedy and neither side wants him on the stage. Well, if he's not polling high enough, and that's usually around 12 or 15%, and I don't think he'll be there. If he's not polling high enough, then that's one less excuse that Biden has, not that Democrats care. When I say that there's a better chance of a debate, I mean, I, I previously thought it was zero. Now I'd put it at 10. Okay, I, I don't think there'll be any debates, you know, but... This was one of the reasons that I factored in. So mm-hmm. if I'm going to take that off the table, I got to adjust my odds. Fair. Sure. Okay. But I, I think he's really just marginalized himself now to Bill Maher types. I mean, he's just here for left-wingers who hate big pharma. 
and they'll complain about wokeism and everything else, you know, like Bar- Bill Maher does. But then the dog returns to its own vomit and they end up voting for all these people anyway. I don't. I, I, so my perspective as a voter wasn't altered by yesterday at all. What he met with the decision he made as an American, I'm just extremely disappointed because it just seems like any opportunity we have that anyone, anybody tries at any moment to do anything inspirational and aspirational at all. Either they get, they get destroyed or they just step on a rake and destroy themselves. And that's what I think Robert F. Kennedy Jr. did yesterday. So from our show's perspective, we're largely moving on. The, 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 the book is closed on the RFK Jr. for president candidacy. And, you know, we, we'll, we may have more to say as if, he, if and when he reaches a critical mass of states he's on the ballots for. But other than that, you know, I, I, I'm not interested in a, you know, uh, we're the Berkeley wing of the Berkeley faculty ticket. I'm just not. Um, and I don't think it has anything to offer America. I mean, basically, she might be a small, smarter Kamala Harris, essentially. L- let, let me talk about the other thing that I am enjoying and I have enjoyed immensely. The first rule of assassination is you kill the assassins. What, what, was, what is being done to Ronna Romney McDaniel right now is, and this was one of the answers that I gave to Governor DeSantis's gathering on, on Monday night in Naples, it is an example of how we are different than they are and why they are beating us. That we are access based and they are leverage based. I don't want to, I know Ronna Romney McDaniel sucks at her job. I know we're paying for her Botox injections. I know we're paying for her private flights. And I know we've lost four straight election cycles. But if I dare step to her, um, then I, you know, I probably can't win. And then I won't get invited to speak at the next RNC event. And I won't get this banquet. Everything on our side ultimately comes down to do I have access? I don't want to give a critical opinion. Might not get hired by that company later. Might not get to work for that candidate later. We we are an entirely, we well, primarily, I shouldn't say entirely. We are a primarily access-driven paradigm on the right. And that's why we lose. We don't ever go for broke. Anybody at the poker, the guy at the poker table, who, unless you're just having a night of just blind luck and that can happen when you're dealing with forms of random chance right Mm -hmm. but unless you're having just blind luck the guys who are good at the poker table night in and night out are the ones that care the least about losing because eventually they'll just leverage you out of the process right yes we care a great deal about losing don't we well that's all we think about exactly and and that's how that's why we always get leveraged out of the process so the other side is a leverage-based system power is where power goes so, so they allow they they, they sat there with Ron or Romney McDaniel, who if they specifically specifically put placed her as charge in charge of the RNC, how would she have behaved any differently than she has for the last four election cycles? Loser, 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 loser. Okay, so we left her there because we don't want to upset the apple cart because I might not get the speaker banquet I want or the appointment I want or the show I want or the network I want. Okay, so we left her there. All right, loss after loss after loss. They let her, quizzling us, hire her, get her to go on national TV and claim that Trump said something that he never said. We talked about that last week, right? So get her to do that. That was her one appearance. She, she, they, they get her on there for one time to agree that Trump said something he never said. And then after that, they just knife her. Ridden, ridden hard and put away wet. Just spent force. Just knife her. And move on. Ruthless, man. I mean, you just watch it like, damn. Did y'all leave at least a breath mint when you were done with her? I mean, that woman's going to need a Silkwood shower for the political train y'all just ran on her in full public view, too. Ruthless. That's why they win. That's why we don't. They're about leverage. We're about access. And uh, what does it mean to be... That's what you want in your media rooms, right? Everybody agrees on everything. Everybody sees everything the same way. Everybody's uh, toting the same narrative. You do when you're ruthless. We're not. We, 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 we're meme makers. We make a mean meme and pretend we're ruthless. But in the end, we cut the deal. We take the check. They write the checks over there. Hey, 
say for about a decade now, Patriot Mobile has been America's only American mobile phone company, which means this is your one option. If uh, you need a mobile phone in this day and age, and chances are you probably do, this is your one option to obtain and use one without giving your money directly to people who hate you. And they have an outstanding customer service team. If you need to switch to any of the three networks within their networks at any particular point in time, you can do that for free. If you're a part of Patriot Mobile, if you're a veteran or first responder, let them know when you go to make the switch. They have extra ways to say thank you for your service. Any of us that make the switch, uh, use the offer code Steve to get a free activation. Decide for yourself. Do you want to keep your phone? Do you want to upgrade your phone? Keep your number, change your number. They'll customize it just for you because they are just that good. Go to PatriotMobile.com slash Steve to make the switch today. PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. Once again, that's PatriotMobile.com slash Steve. I want to add a couple more things here on the Ronna Romney situation. Because I, this is, I mean, we could do an entire political science like course for Hillsdale on just this story. And the ecosystem of it. And the, and the consequences from it. The idea of... I sat, in, I sat in the front row of a debate in November in Miami between the wives of Vivek Ramaswamy and Ron DeSantis at an RNC debate that Ronna Romney McDaniel allowed NBC News to moderate. And she introduced them and thanked them and was gracious to them and gave them the rights to moderate it, to ask the questions, which of course are going to come all from their premise. That's the same news agency that just knifed her in public. So this is another example of bend over desperate for mainstream corporate acceptance. You can even vet our candidates for us. You can even ask the questions. We'll even give you a spotlight. I would imagine whatever the amount, to, whatever the, the viewership of that night was, and since Trump wasn't there, it probably wasn't high. But I will guarantee you more Republicans around the country that night, whatever it was, saw more of those NBC News talents than they have probably seen the last five years combined. Fair? Yeah. Yeah. She gave them a platform. to infest, I'm sorry, influence our side. How did they repay her? They just knifed her. Just knifed her. And they're just going to move on. There are things... I don't believe we can do that God will bless. I think if we bear false witness, God will not bless that. I think if we steal, God will not bless that. You know, the things that go against his character, right? But short of that, there's lots of ruthless things we can do. And the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing and forceful, violent men lay hold of it. We just do almost none of those things. And every, and and most people in this, in this movement or party outside of, uh, outside of very few on the political side of it, most people with prominent political positions in this movement or party got them because of whom they're associated with. Not because of their intelligence or their cunning. They were, with the, we, they were with the right clique. They were with the right sect. They had prominence at that time and could get them a nomination and get them elected. That's the qualification most of the time. Everything's based on access. So you owe this guy a favor, owe that guy a favor, they owe you this, you owe this, them this. and That's a grift. What they have over there is a movement, man. They may talk a lot about egalitarianism and equality of outcomes, but brother, internally, their ecosystem, it's like, you know, the pool hall scene in the dark night. 
We're going to have tryouts. That's what they do over there. They just crack the cue stick in half, close the door, say, aggressive expansion. Got room for one. We'll see who comes out. That's our person. This entire episode is symbolic of the last few decades of L's. We are about access. And so people like Rana remain in power because of her ability to grant access to the right people that will keep her there. Not on any merit, because she has none. None. Had not done any. She came from the Michigan Republican Party, which I can tell you firsthand has been an unmitigated. How many years have you guys heard me talk about the, the mess that is the Michigan Republican Party? To the point that it's almost non-existent. It, it, it doesn't exist. Gretchen Whitmer did to the Michigan Republican Party what Ron DeSantis has done to the Florida Democratic Party. It's just been, it's reduced to a letterhead. Doesn't exist. And the people running the Michigan Republican Party set the stage for a Gretchen Whitmer. She came out of the people that destroyed the Michigan GOP. Now you would think, based on that, she could not possibly get promoted, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. She got the best of promotions. Got to run the whole thing. And now here we are. She takes a golden parachute from them. She's finally outused. She's finally outlived her usefulness to Trump. She's only got reelected RNC chairman because he wanted to keep her there for whatever his personal reasons were. Wouldn't even endorse his own attorney, Harmeet Dillon. Remember that from a couple of, was that about a year and a half ago? Right. So she only lasted another election through another election cycle because of him. Then whatever were the reasons were that she fell out of favor with him. So it's not because she sucked all this time that she's gone. It's because she fell out of f favor with fearless leader. But okay, you know, we finally got the result we wanted. Hopefully the people in charge now are better. I don't know how they could be worse, frankly. Doesn't mean they'll be good. Did I say they'll be good? No. I just don't know how it could possibly be worse. I, I just don't. Think she's going to get her golden parachute, collect her 30 pieces of silver. They barely left her with a potter's field to hang herself. Oh, well, she'll walk out of there with some form of money, I'm sure. But her reputation, her brand, she is a spent force. I mean, she she's the she's a political OnlyFans account. They have just used her, and she's done. And they're just going to move on. And, the, and they did it after they got her to say something that wasn't true and to affirm them claiming something about Trump that is not true. At some point, man, you just got to tip your cap. Pour one out. Respect. Those, these are the moments where I think to myself, man, I, I wish I didn't have a conscience sometimes. In the flesh... My flesh is like, if I didn't have a conscience, man, I'd be pimping them so hard, making so much bank. Because you guys know, you, know, you guys know how much I love losing. You guys are really familiar with that. One of my favorite things. I look for losses. I just love it. Have you know, you, that, that, that's often said about me. Steve loves L's, right? I love them, right? It'll be carved in granite someday. Yes. I, I just can't get enough. I love them. I mean, I, I, I hate losing more than anything on earth. But I can't join over there. My life is not my own. I was bought at a high price. So I'm not going to get to do those things. Doesn't mean on some level I don't respect the game. Because I think like them. I don't think like a lot of our people do. I think like they do. I just don't believe like they do. You know, I don't. That's why I can't be there. But this whole, you know, glad hand me. 
If I cared about glad handing, I wouldn't have stayed in Iowa all this time where I'm away from everybody. I don't give a rip about any of that crap. I'm pretty simple, man. If you can help me win, which is uh, for me, we're going to advance the principles and ideas and concepts that I think are what's best for the human condition east of Eden. If I think you can help me win in that regard, doing for, for that cause, even if I hated your guts five minutes ago, let's roll. And if you can't, even if we were the best of buds five minutes ago, sucks to be you. But that's not how this operates over here in many places, is it? It really operates like a high school lunchroom. What table just sit at? Who are you dating? Did you get elected king or queen of court? Who's popular? Who's not? I mean, we are, we're, <laughs> we're performing Greece. Are you a pink lady or a T-bird? And they're doing rules for radicals. Who do you think is going to win that fight? Same ones who have been winning so far. Yeah, probably. And this, this is an anecdotal moment, a teachable moment that defines the entire political landscape of the last era, really. That, with the, that since Reagan left the national stage, with the exception of about six months with the contract with America, about three months before that election and then three months after it occurred, and then about the first year maybe or so of the Trump era, we have been playing defense. By choice, by the way. By choice. Putting people in power that really are desperate for the affections and affirmations of our enemies, not us. Pretending there's nothing we can do and 14% show up for the Iowa caucuses. Should I go on? We have been outworked, outlasted, outwitted. It's a game of survivor. We got voted off the island first every season. Every season we got voted off first. Learn nothing. Nothing. And now they just take our trash, which we didn't have the balls to take out for how many years? How many shows, hands ringing, people complaining, nothing changed. And she's winning by overwhelming majorities. Because whatever group was running the party pre-Trump wanted her there, and then Trump wanted her there. Not for any other qualification at all. None. But just who she could slurp for. They bring her in, pay her to lie, and then just knife her. Just take out our trash for us in 10 minutes. And that's why we lose. This is why we lost. This, and this moment right here, if this is the last show I ever did, I'd be okay with it. I mean, I'd miss it. I love doing this. But I would feel as if I've, I've said all I really have fundamentally to say. I'm just finding new ways to say it. Because this conversation we're having about her right now is the entire encapsulation of the left versus right political paradigm in America since basically January of 1989. Since Reagan took the term liberal and made it so toxic an entire political party had to rebrand themselves. We've only had a couple of moments since then that we even tried to play any offense at all. Tried to exert any power at all. You know, I'll give Trump even more benefit of the doubt because he faced Russian collusion and everything else. I'll even say maybe the first three years of his presidency, actually, given all the BS he had to put up with. But even but you would think after all that BS, the swamp shows up and says, hey, if you don't take your greatest economy ever and shut the whole thing down uh, in an election year, not coincidentally, um, yeah, uh, you know, uh, you might not get reelected. I mean, how many more times do you have to be lied to before you stop accepting at face value these people's claims, right? Yes. Instead, he was like, 
Bring in the bedazzled scarves. Hand the podium to the demon Fauci. This is this is why we're here. They're just they're not better at this than we are. They're tougher than we are. They have more faith than we do. Their tactics are not superior. But both sides behave as if their principles are. And so when that's the case, you can have the poopiest, runniest turd tactics ever. But if both sides are acting as if one side is right, guess which side's going to win every single time? That one. We had no will to take her out. None. None. They used her up. Hoard her out, man, in public. Just hoard her out. Like Book of Ezekiel level whoring out. Just hoard her out in public. Mascara running. Eyeliners all streaking everywhere. Tears down her cheek from being used and abused. Just reeking of bodily fluids. And then they just left her there with the camera running and didn't even leave a tip. Peace out. Thanks. One last thing on this. You guys remember the day after the 2016 election when the, my one and only appearance likely on the uh, news hour on PBS and they asked me, why do we miss this election? Do you guys remember this interview I did? Oh yeah. And I asked them, uh, "Will you guys talk about diversity all the time?" Oh, huh? that's yeah, how much how much ideological diversity is in your newsroom? How much? I mean, there's a lot of racial diversity and ethnic diversity and you know, sexual diversity in your newsroom. I mean, how much how much ideological, philosophical diversity is in your newsroom? That's why you missed it. You guys all agree? Well, isn't that essentially what NBC News says we strive to do here? Yes. Yeah. That's what they say in their own statement. We're here to broadcast a narrative. And so that's what we're going to do. We say such things too. They actually do it. They do the stuff we just talk about and sell books about. They, they do it. Hour two is next. Back here with Hour 2 here on Blaze TV Radio and Podcast. Steve Dace here with Aaron McIntyre, Todd Erzin, and all of you. And you can all, though hopefully not all at once, let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox. Just email us, Steve, at SteveDace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, MeWe, and Gab. You can follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, get her Instagram, and TikTok. And if you like the podcast version, then we would like it if you... Would mind letting others know that you like it with a five-star review. Thanks to the, so many of you that have done that for us already. Thousands of you, in fact. And then also you can uh, hit subscribe or in the case of iTunes, follow. And that way, every single time we do a new show, it'll show up in your podcast feed every single time. So thank you to all of you for doing that for us too. And thank you to our friends over at realestateagentsitrust.com. I mentioned before, there are more for sale signs in my yard right now than I've seen the last couple of years. So the, the Fed showed, hiked up the skirt, showed a little bit of leg last week. Well, we might cut rates maybe a few times this year. Maybe they'll come down. All right, let's get in. Because we are just sitting on a glut of housing inventory right now. So if that's you, or maybe you're thinking, you know what? Since rates aren't great, you know, maybe for a certain higher end home, there aren't enough buyers right now. So... Maybe I can get a great deal, you know, that kind of offsets that interest rate in that next home. Not a terrible time to act on that front either. Either way, just make sure 
that you go in with an agent you can trust that you're going to find via realestateagentsitrust.com. A lot of times, these are agents from right here in this audience, so you know you share the same value system with them. You have a much in common. Uh, they're going to be the top sellers in their markets. They're going to know the best practices to get you to where you want to go all the way to the finish line. So make sure your starting line is realestateagentsitrust.com. Again, head over there before you go into the Let's Go Brandon real estate market. That's Real Estate Agents I Trust. Dot com. And with that, let's get to one of our most popular segments each and every week. This is Buy, Sell, or Hold. Aaron has your submissions, the ones he selected at least. We'll get through as many of these as we can. And then the ones that remain, uh, we will do in the overtime today for Blaze TV subscribers at blazetv.com slash dace. No topic is off limits. Todd, you and I are going to decide, are we going to buy it? Are we going to sell it? This time, I'm going to let you pick what is the penalty should you choose to turn in your man card and go for the hold because you're just that weak of a person and not really a man. You're dead inside. What's the penalty? Hmm. What's the penalty? How? Uh, well, during that... Uh Trump Bible commercial. I was pretty. You're sure. not going to let that go, hey, guys. This is the ninth time you have, he has pretty, brought this up. Much. He's brought it up in, during every commercial break here, off air. Okay. You, 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 this, you, this, you, this is this is this is this is under your craw, brother. You threw it to me. I assume you meant it. I mean, uh, just stage left when he was doing that. I'm pretty sure I saw Christy Nome doing her next dental commercial. So, <laughs> um, how about you got to watch both of those commercials on loop? On loop for how long? No, you have to r- listen to Christy Nome read the Donald Trump endorsed Bible, King James Version Bible to you. But the camera is just focused on her teeth as she reads it to you. So the camera is just on her teeth while she reads it to you. That's pretty good. Okay. That's pretty bad. All right. Isn't that the the Trump Bible thing? Isn't it just can't be sitting well with you? I'm just used to the whole TBN, QVC, cringe thing. You know, there's certain things you just put up with in your native tribe because you just know it's a sunk cost. You can't do anything about it. Okay? Oh, we could do something about this. And on the evangelical side, th- this kind of cringy QVC for your love gift this month, TBN stuff is just a, it's a sunk cost, man. It just is what it is. You know, every family's got Cousin Eddie, you know, so his heart's in the right place. It's just, you don't want him, you know, you want him to stay in the bus out there, out in the driveway. Is his heart okay. in the right place? Huh? Is his heart in the right place? Well, Look at it this way. Maybe the whole thing, because maybe the whole thing's about money. I don't know, but I could spin it the other way if you want to make me do that and say, are there people who otherwise would not read a Bible and open it up and see what the word of God has to say for them? Unless Donald Trump told them to. The answer to that question, I think we would both agree is, yeah. There's a certain segment of this society, for example, particularly in the boomer cadre, that, you know, Donald Trump is in whom they live and breathe. So, you know, if he can get them to open up a, uh, open up a word of God and, and, and they earnestly read it and receive it, wouldn't be my chosen method, you know. But I'm probably not a lot of people's chosen method sitting here in a Michigan hockey jersey, all right, to get people to read the Bible either, you know. So the Lord works in mysterious ways. But I hear you. I'm feeling you. Chances are it's just, you know, complete tacky cringe qbc tbn stuff but yeah joseph's brothers once threw him down a well or you know sold him into slavery i mean right and that ended up working out didn't it i mean he had to go to prison falsely accused of adultery and faced you know potential execution but eventually it worked itself out that he was right there to help god's people during a severe famine (laughs) Oh, with your love Roman. gift, enjoy the bottom of the well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's our what's the verse we close the show with now? Romans eight twenty eight, right? So, yeah. D- does d- do I die a little inside every time you reference this? And d- can I have and have I made myself not watch that commercial at all because I can't handle it until Aaron made me watch it during the montage? And then did I jump on my laptop to try to find something else to look at during the few seconds that that was on the screen? Because it's just complete total white trash cringe. Yes. But, hey, it may also work. 
you know, what we intend for evil or cringe or tacky, God can use for good. You know, I'd rather, I, I guess if we're going to do, I'd rather have him doing this than NFTs, trading cards. There's nothing, there's, there's, from that cringe, there's, that's just cringe. You see what I'm saying? Nothing good will occur from buying that. That's just all pure idolatry. All right. In this case, even if it's unintentional, okay, even if it's unintentional, there's at least one person that's going to buy one of those that's going to open up their Bible that never did before. I hope you're right. I just see him in the temple setting up his money changing table. That's all I see. That all being said, dude better win. All right, let's go. All right, we will begin with Raymond Fava, who says, rap music is fake and gay. See the Diddy story. Before the feds even raided his properties in, I think, L.A. and even Miami, there were multiple accusations that Diddy had relations with uh, dudes. So rap music is fake and gay. There were? Mm. I guess I just don't... Accusations. Okay, I I wasn't aware there were... uh... P. Diddy uh, diddying accusations. I was not aware of this. Did you know? Did you hear? Well, about this? I just saw his face on Twitter multiple times today. It's something lewd and lascivious, and I didn't look because I'm not really shocked, but I don't know the details. I would sell on this though, only because while I don't like rap music, I think it's heinous and unproductive for a lot of different reasons. I think there's certain you know, Ice Cube, Ice Ice T Tribe that would instantly shank the kind of P. Diddy you're talking about. You know, I think they're not edifying for their community in their own way, at least in their younger years. Um, but I don't think all of rap music is this. So I might be splitting hairs. Yeah, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna sell. I don't, I don't think it's entirely fake. I don't think it's entirely gay. Um, yeah, I'm going to sell. I, and I don't, I don't know what P. Diddy is or isn't guilty of. He's I have being, no clue. he's basically no, not by the feds, but the speculation online is that he's basically the uh, rap world's Epstein. Really? Hmm. Okay. This is the first time here. I had no idea. Daniel okay. Garrett says Michigan Democrats will adopt the 2024 campaign slogan: "A chicken in every pot and an illegal immigrant in every garage." Uh, that could isn't she offering like a yeah like a rental yeah subsidy to illegal aliens or something i mean what would what would, tell me what their incentive is to stop they have no opposition so un, until opposition presents itself i don't i don't know what incentive they have to stop is and agreed and in terms of the overall republican apparatus nationwide is it a lot closer by and large to Michigan and Rona, or is it a lot closer on any given day to where you just came from? We oh, all know the answer to that. It's, it's not sad even close. And tragic. And yeah, it's terrible. just not. It's not even close. Now, yeah. now, Michigan's an extreme example of the Republican Party you're describing, yeah. but it's the logical conclusion of yes. the Republican Party we have mostly lived yes. through. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, just endless corporate grift, followed now by a different kind of grift. Now, if you don't believe in every, if you don't believe in every single conspiracy theory I have, then then you're it, it's just we're just trading grifts. Yeah, agreed. But I'll so I'll buy. Why not? Next up, we have a top ten list. This is from Mike Devita. Top ten triggers for the Steve Day Show drinking game. You ready for this? You bet. Number ten, Aaron's montage. That, that's number 10. That has triggered me. If that's 10, I don't know what the other nine are because yeah. your montage has triggered me a time or two. Yes. Number nine, the three second or greater pause after the montage. <laughs> you mean when I'm not sure how to react? Yeah. I like that. Okay, I'll buy. Okay. Number eight, after a fair trial. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, okay. Is that a triggering thing? I mean, I would I would tend to find that to be an encouraging thing for me, but doesn't wouldn't trigger me. The triggering is that, that we're not seeing that happen. You know, you don't, see what I'm saying? But I do. Okay, but okay. Number seven, Todd asks, where are the men? I think we all ask that, but yes, I'll buy. Yep. Yep. Number six, somebody grabs the gun. Yes. Where is the gun, by the way? There it is. Okay. Should probably know where pointed that is at all times. Todd for so some reason. So would it reason. be an act of great sobriety if I finally shoot Steve? Is that? Uh, yeah, like I don't think I've even held this gun before. I think you guys are, are the only ones that have held it. Why is it pointed towards Todd today? I don't know. Because I tried to slide it to Steve last week. Oh, so no, that's, that's right. That's you're, right. It's not because you're I trying to hold yourself that. accountable. Yeah. Okay. Number five, is it smoked? 
That should drive you to smoke, not to drink. I mean, smoking meats. Yeah. Yes. Number four, look at the polls. I like it. This is a pretty good list. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Number three, what did you do, Deborah? (laughs) That drives you to laugh, not to drink. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's... I, that's one of the best lines Todd's ever had on the show, I think. Yeah. Number two, Aaron repeats himself. Do you do that a lot? I do because do I'm, I'm, I'm concerned people won't actually understand what I'm hearing. People like Mike. <laughs> what yeah. did you do, Mike? So we're finally getting down to this. Mike is just ultimately, I mean, his top thing is just resentful of you. This is what this is about. And number one, a Lindsey Graham joke. That drives to, me from drinking, actually. Guys, I have days. to tell you, there has been more than one lady in this audience that has requested more Lindsey Graham jokes and more screaming of me, look at the polls. More than one, well, pret- who knows, you know, uh, pretending to at least uh, feigning to be a lady in the inbox. We don't know. I mean, it could be Bart from his mom's basement. You know, who knows? But if there, more than more than one person claiming to be a woman has requested a continuance of Lindsey Graham jokes and more screaming. Look at the polls. I don't know why the ladies seem to like that, but they at least one cadre of them in this audience seems to. Yes. If there's a type of the most conservative Steve Day show listener slash fan, would you say that they would be in the running for it? The the women who just can't even anymore with the lack of masculinity. Or and the so send that's me why notes. those jokes yeah. are so funny to yeah, them. Yeah, or they, the ones that send me notes, you know, um, tell me what to do with my husband. Yeah. I get I get quite a few of those. Yeah. I forgot to say this at the top. Uh, we're three down now, 47 to go. John Lindquist. <laughs> I just started bookmarking all of these. and Oh, crap. We've got 50 today. Okay. John Lindquist says Mount Rushmore of 70s rock vocalists, Brad Delp, Freddie Mercury, Steve Perry, and Steve Walsh. 70s. 70s? Steve Walsh? Who am I thinking of in the 70s? I remember, I know Joe Walsh. I I don't know who Steve Walsh. I know Steve Miller. Steve Steve Walsh was a quarterback for the Miami Hurricanes. Who was the first guy on there? must mean... Steve Walsh. And is this just American or is this just 70s? What yeah, the fa- tell you what. American it- singer in so- Kansas. Oh, oh. okay. I guess well, I didn't know the guy's name. The, the, the he's fact, good. Okay. Yeah, he was good. But the fact, that if, if given how great the music of that decade was, if, you're, if, if there's any question about your list at all, I have to reject it. So, well, so. Was it American? Uh, it looks, uh, no, Freddie Mercury is not American. So, yeah. Oh, that's what. So, Robert Plant? Come on. Yeah, I mean, Led Zeppelin sold more records during the 70s than any other act did. So, yeah. So I got to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Next, we go to Mr. Boltitude, who says, a woman makes as good of a pastor, priest, minister, or rabbi as she does a father. I agree. There are neither one are jobs for women. I agree. So, bye. I'll bye. Yeah, I think it's not quite apples to apples but i think the premise is yeah I, uh, that's a good clarification you, it, it, a woman can't yeah, be a it, man it, we it, have saints saint catherine of siena who she wasn't a pastor but she's a doctor of the church she's brilliant she knew the lord uh, so and i'm sure you could speak sure i mean the biblical example everybody brings up is deborah okay and but but the you have to consider the you have to add the context of deborah number one there's a reason why she's the only one you guys ever bring up. Okay. Number two, um, is, is, is it a, whether you're a Catholic Protestant or any form of sentient life form, is it a good idea to hermeneutically analyze the Bible by one example, uh, up against the entirety of the rest of the writings and examples in the book to take the one, the, the, the one seeming, what you seem to think is an exception and make that the rule up against the other 65 and a half books. Is that, is that hermeneutically sound, do we think, gentlemen? Yes or no? My Twitter it, feed no. often seems to think so. Before we start Romans tomorrow, we may want to clarify that. Okay? <laughs> okay. But, but if you look at this one exception, number one, she mocks. Uh, she, is it Barack that she mocks? Who is it? Or is, I can't remember which guy. She, she, she there's, the, there's, the, there's the guy she mocks because he won't leave. He says, I will only go, I will only do what God tells me to do if you go with me. She mocks him for that. Okay, number one. Number two, she emerges at a time that is the spiritually darkest moment in all of the Old Testament. The time of the judges. Everyone is wise in their own eyes. We've, we've basically gone, within a generation after Joshua, we've gone full bore back into om- almost borderline times of Noah kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure 
given the backdrop of when she is anointed, that that's the, that's the most optimum time to be drawing our examples from. Fair? Sure. Yeah, given the context of that moment. So, yeah. All right. Next up, we go to the USA is a Republic who says Steve will never be able to do a show of nothing but good and inspiring stories. Uh, bye. That's likely true. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think says Speaker Johnson's claim of a biblical worldview turned out to be taking the Lord's name in vain. Ooh, you cut me well, deep, Shrek, on that. It is that that's actually yikes. But yeah, that's I mean throwing to just out to it, just dangle it out there as a as a as a slogan. This is the problem. This is what as a the, brand. Most people in the church, I I honestly think lovers of Jesus, the only way they think about using the Lord's name in vain is throwing down a JC bomb. That's like, that's actually tangential to what it really is. And this is it. It's just, truly, this is what it is. I just got, Mel- Melissa just emailed me. Is there a pill darker than black pill? If so, I, I'm going to need to order them after well, today's show. Is obsidian? <laughs> obsidian. <laughs> slate. I love how I have that <laughs> right, been, at, right at the top of my pill. head. I've been slate pilled. <laughs> been slate pilled. I don't know why I had that on the top of my head, tip of my tongue, but it was ready I've to go. I've been Eisenstein, Rosencrantz Bridge, <laughs> build <laughs> a black hole. <laughs> Nothing comes back out. I would buy the, I mean, come to think of it, I should go online. Is Eisenkrantz, is, 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 that's what it is. It, it, Rosencrantz Einstein pill dot com. Is that, is that, is that available? You want to buy that Start, domain name? Cause yeah. yeah. Just take that domain and direct it to our show page. <laughs> We're literate enough to make that financially sound right. Oh, okay. Glenn Hodge says uh, he's got a Mount Rushmore of artists or bands snubbed by the rock and roll hall of fame. Jim Gross, Bad Company, Steppenwolf, and B- Blue Oyster Cult. I mean, those are all good acts to some degree. And See, somebody yeah. somebody added um, foreigner got inducted this year. Yeah, so th- th- yeah, because I saw that when I was at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last year. But guys, if 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 we're putting Dolly Parton into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and not Bad Company, come on. But I, if if Dolly Parton, but let's do it this way: if Dolly Parton is in and she is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, then then which of those acts does she deserve to be in over? Because I would say none. In the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've never been in there. Uh, it's a, it's a I, great museum. I'm by sure the way. it's great, and I'm basically pretending I care by asking <gasps> this question. But is if it's a true Hall of Fame, like it, shouldn't there be some controversy about people who don't get in? Or, I see what you're saying. Because if it's not a real yeah. Hall of Fame, if it's just a place to go and say, hey, I like them in the 70s, just let everybody in and who cares? Okay, fair. Yeah. I, mean, I don't. Otherwise, there should be some people where you're like, I mean, there's baseball players that were damn fine ball players. What's the case for Dolly Parton being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Even Dolly Parton was like, I don't belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She even said this. Well, she yeah, she's not in Rock and Roll. Yeah. There's no case. See, apparently, so why is there any standard? Just let people in. I, I don't know. Whatever makes him buy a ticket, I guess. I will say the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, was. I said this last summer when we visited, way less woke than the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. Not even close. Way less woke. Much more fun. You could spend an entire day there. We really enjoyed ourselves. We really did. Highly recommend. Next, Tony Rob- uh, Robeson says, uh, the Moscow concert hall attack was a joint Ukraine and CIA operation. It's possible. I could, I could buy it. Okay, I won't sell it out of hand. I, I could buy it. Yeah. I, I, I also. What do you don't make think... of the United States actually giving Russia a heads up like two weeks ahead of time? Yeah, I, I, I don't even know what I believe on any of this stuff yeah. anymore. If you found this out, this is that, what Jesse Kelly. Th- this is you... what Jesse Kelly said the other day. Like, what institutions would we trust to tell us the truth about what I happened? Don't, I don't. With that bridge the I other day. Uh, how, dude, can we sit here and say that Putin would not have? Do you think Putin's not capable of the former head of the a KGB? Of, a lot of people of say putting that's his how, own false flag operation. A lot of people out there? say that's how he came to power in the first place. Yeah. 
This he just he just does his own rice tag flat fire and blames it on you know blames it on the Chechnyans uh, the, the yes. Muslims in Chechnya or the Ukrainians. I mean, there's th- this is the world we're in right now. So having these dogmatic views of this side's always good and this side's always bad is a surefire way to step on rakes and get a lot of damn people killed unnecessarily. So some the FBI actually responded to the bridge, the boat, Baltimore thing and came out and said there's no proof that it's terrorism to which somebody replied i believe that with every fiber of my being until you weighed in on it and now i'm not sure anymore <laughs> there you go yeah. yeah yeah i could i could buy any of your i think any of these are possibilities that you could convince me would be true yeah even though they are incontrovertible with one another and yeah in terms of accusation sure John Endicott is next. He did not address this to you, Todd, but I am. Uh, Once the Big Ten and SEC have notified the ACC schools that they will be offered a spot in their conferences, eight members will vote to disband the ACC sometime before July. Yeah, I think so. I I don't... That's where the trend is going. That Nobody is regularly standing up and being principled uh, about this. And the minute they do, uh, like... um, uh, at uh, Alabama uh, and Nick Saban, instantly you can't possibly have a have a, a take because everybody else is so busy selling out. I'm not. They're not going to listen around to your moralizing. I mean, my goodness. Yeah. What? Who's Who's going to stop? Who's going to put the brakes on this? We're right now. The transfer portal is wide open. There's people in the transfer portal while they're playing games. Everybody's. But everybody. Everybody operates at the level of crack addict when it comes to college sports there there's a deep level of addiction there's hardly anything in their life that they give that level of of emotional bandwidth to they're not going to stop this it should be stopped it's all insane it's immoral it's decadent it's gluttonous it's all that stuff but give me more steve your take i think this is a pretty cool michigan throwback hockey jersey to the old ccha days okay Scott Campbell says, Cali- I love this one. California will adopt, adopt the following training uh, or train math problems next school year. So this is for California curriculum next school year in the topic or subject of math. Number one, if a train carrying 50 Amazon trailers leaves L.A. at 15 miles per hour, how many minutes until all the trailers are looted? Nice. And the number two, what are the odds that a train carrying U-Hauls from Dallas to L.A. arrives undisturbed? Buy, sell, or hold. Those are two math problems in California schools next year. I'm selling. There were no uh, pronouns or representation from the LGBT community. I'm going to sell, too, because I think they can be far snottier, actually. I think we can do much better than that. We didn't get Obsidian Black, did we? We did not, no. And no one even dropped a poop map, so no, I'm selling. Yeah. Next, we go to David Welshons, who says Dusty May will lead Michigan to an NCAA tournament bid in his first season. I think that, and Todd is going to love this answer, I think that if his uh, three best players, as are uh, expected, all transfer to Michigan, the answer to that question is yeah, because two of those guys would be preseason first team all Big Ten at their positions. If that doesn't happen, then I think it... It'll be hard to put that kind of team together in one year because this is a total rebuild. But if you only play five and you're going to bring in three guys and two of them are first team all Big Ten caliber players, then I could see that happening. Short of that, I don't, you know. So, um, and I do think actually he'll bring those guys with him. So, so you're I'll saying buy. Dusty May's uh, luggage is Gucci? Is that some kind of reference? I yeah, don't know. That's a reference to what's his face at Colorado. Deion Sanders. He said ah, he's bringing okay. his own luggage and yeah. it's Gucci. Yeah. Todd, your thoughts. They went four and eight, right? Yeah. 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 Go team. Nothing matters. Go team. I, I still think this is a pretty sweet throwback Michigan hockey jersey from the old CCHA days. Flipper says the Baltimore Bridge event is the black swan that has been coming that we couldn't see. I, I'm selling until I get more information. I, I'm, I have no I, idea yeah, how. Yeah, I'm going to sell until we get more information. Not that I don't think that what you're suggesting is possible. Of course. Did you? <laughs> Somebody posted the side by side of the uh, the boat and then the one from the movie that the Obamas produced. Oh, yeah. That we oh, yeah. I saw you, that. I know you saw that, but you're yeah. like, dude, I mean, everybody is so on tilt. 
I, I help, but, help me help me to understand. This is this is not 1904, not 1944. How is it possible in one of the most strategically important harbors in America from a supply chain standpoint? How many ships go through there on a perennial basis? How is it possible that there is either a no con- and I'll ask I'm going to ask Daniel this question here in about 10 minutes because he doesn't live very far from this bridge. How is it possible there is either a no contingency for this kind of event or b no content that contingency was not activated for this event? How is that possible? I, wouldn't you guys love to know the recordings of what's going on within the monitoring system as this ship is getting closer and closer to the bridge? What are they doing? What are they saying? I mean, that blows my mind that this could happen in 2024. And if you're talking about symbols, allegories, oh yeah, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, I mean, that's a that's to me that's a let those with ears to hear, let them hear kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that is just a, a, I mean the 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 allegorical symbolism of that is, shall we say, potent. Some reporter actually already wrote that story uh learning more about the controversial francis scott scott key that that oh yeah that's, that. they've gone to work already yeah, on yeah. that front well yeah, done everybody yes we're doing great we're uh doing great. one more maybe before we get out uh for this break uh, sam w says joe rogan and jordan peterson are preaching more genuine truth than elevation church will for their easter services uh, sad as the great prophets Metallica that's once sang. Probably true. Yeah. Sad but true. Yeah, I mean, that's sad but true. Yeah. Okay, one more. Okay. YOLO JKBRBJC says the real Donald Trump endorsed Bible is a great deal at $60. Todd, your thoughts? <laughs> Jeez. What? Hey, just, uh, just, I'm curious, Todd, remind me, when's your birthday? <laughs> Lightsabers and that Bible. My goodness. Yes. Sell. That is really, really under your skin, isn't it? Like it should be under everybody's skin. That that has really yanked your chain, brother. It's preposterous. <laughs> yeah. The good news for you is if you were if you were at your wits end with Todd's deep thoughts on the state of collegiate sports. We have now found a, a new bane of his existence, the Trump Bible. Fair? It should be the bane. Of it. A healthy church would have been like, oh, hell no. What, apparently they're lining up for a great deal. <laughs> you can't see like the LBJ Bible? <laughs> no, the, the Nixon Bible? <laughs> the Bush Bible. Not gonna do it. More in a moment. Back here on the Steve Day Show. I know so many of you are disheartened to see what has happened to our country on many fronts, uh, one of them in particular, the importance of citizenship. That's why one of the new courses, one of the free new courses our friends at Hillsdale are offering is from noted historian Victor Davis Hanson. It's American citizenship and its decline. And this course is going to trace the history of citizenship as it's uh, been undermined in America today by open borders, identity politics, the administrative state, globalization, and more. Uh, You'll get a deeper insight to the connection between citizenship and freedom and why when we don't value citizenship, our freedoms erode. All right, so sign up today for Hillsdale's latest free online course, one of many you can check out. Uh, American citizenship and its decline over at Dace 4, F-O-R, DaceForHillsdale.com is where you want to go. Uh, start your free course today at DaceForHillsdale.com. Yet again, that's DaceForHillsdale.com. Let's welcome in audio only this week. Uh, he is the prophet of woe and lamentation, our colleague here at Blaze Media, Daniel Horowitz. It's good to have you with us, brother. How are you? Hey, Steve, it's good to be with you by audio. You know, we focus on words, not deeds. So I guess it shouldn't make much of a difference. You hear the same words. That's true. Plus, neither one of us are winning a beauty pageant. So 
I don't think anybody's missing anything. <laughs> Let, let's get to how far away are you from the Francis Scott Key Bridge there in Baltimore? How far away About do you live? 14, 14 miles as the as the bird flies. So you've traveled this bridge on more than one occasion then in, in, in living in that area. Yeah, I mean, my dad in the 80s used to work in the shipyards there at Bethlehem Steel. So um, obviously it's like the Baltimore Beltway is a nightmare. I mean, everyone knows the D.C. Beltway, the Baltimore Beltway. You get rid of that bridge on the east side. I live on the west side, northwest side. All that traffic now goes there, and that's going to be for years. Okay, so walk me through. I want to ask a question I brought up before you came on. Walk me through how this is considered, from a supply chain standpoint, one of the most strategically valuable ports that we have in our country. How much shipping traffic goes through that on a perennial basis. So walk me through how in the year 2024, there isn't a contingency plan, or at least one that's enacted, for when a ship loses power... And it's going to crash head, you know, uh, head first into that bridge. And what in the world was going on in the, you know, in the in in the minute? Because these ships aren't going to steer, you know, like a, a rowboat. So they clearly saw this collision course coming for a period of time. What were they talking about? What were they saying? I mean, how? What were they doing? This is going to suck. I mean, I just help me understand how this is possible in the year 2024 because i don't so so steve one one of the things i think we always have to be careful with um we have a lot of demonic things going on okay so we had covid we had something happened in hawaii with children getting killed that we don't even know how many there's never a resolution there's never a follow-up there's never any continuity of narrative obviously we had vegas we have a bunch of these kind of islamic shootings we've had in attacks uh, with a Christmas Day attack in Tennessee, we never heard more about any of this stuff. And we're now at a point where we no longer have one to two day media cycles, even on the biggest events like ever. But they're now a few hours. Mm -hmm. So this is not it's being compared to probably the, the Sunshine Causeway in Tampa Bay 44 years ago. But the difference is that that was very localized, right? I mean, it's kind of in a corner of Florida. This is down I-95. So so both surface transportation-wise and then it's the gateway to the port of the Baltimore Inner Harbor, which, you know, for 200 years has been a big port. Um, and I got on my show. You got, you got to be careful because we, we could believe anything at this point because of what we know has happened with some other things. But you don't want to make stuff up, okay? You don't want right. to assume things and assert things. Um, without an info. So I got on my show, you know, 26 hours ago and I said, look, I mean, I know nothing more than you do. You know, we're not going to speculate. Let's move on. 24 hours later, I got on two hours ago and nothing changed. I mean, Steve, the only information we have is what we have up at the blaze is that this very ship um, seemed to get into some sort of accident in the Antwerp, Belgium port eight years ago, caused some damage uh, to the port into the ship. We don't know who the crew is. We don't know the name of the pilot, but we know the name of the guy from the Catholic Charities Organization that took them around to Walmart before. Um, we don't know anything. I mean, we know a ship hit the bridge, and they called in a May Day, so miraculously they were able to evacuate, and it looks like no one got killed other than, than the construction crew. But what caused this? What was with the two outages um, what was happening from the moment they steered out of the out of the dock? Um, who who are these people? We don't know anything, and it's out of the news. It's already out of the news, Steve. I mean, this is the place where we have the most cars coming into the country at a time when the number one inflation item is anything that has to do with automobiles. So the purchase, the servicing, the insurance maintenance of cars uh this is this is going to be a big problem so I, it's not even in the news i i literally cannot find anything on it there's no statement of narrative you see, you see what i'm saying steve it's not even like well there here's a statement of narrative but we have some issues with it what is the basic statement of narrative are they interviewing these people where are they now mm -hmm. are they all good i mean i'm assuming we could rule out that they're not 
terrorists themselves, but you know, was it a cyber terrorist terrorism from afar? Was it DEI incompetence? Is, is this part of a broader trend of, uh, uh, you know, planes, ships, and trains, and basic infrastructure that we take for granted? A not having a contingency, and B being steered and run by boobs. I mean, I don't know, but it doesn't look like we're going to find out. And, and we're living in a media environment now where we've gone from bias to malfeasance. And, and so narrative matters more than anything else. And, and what are we estimating? I, I, what's the estimated death toll right now, Daniel? What's the latest you've heard? Probably, thankfully, only six. Okay, I, I thought it was six or seven. I wasn't sure the number. That's why I asked you. I knew you would know. If it was 60, 100, hundreds, then there would have to be some form of legitimate muckraking going on for that form of a death toll. All right. But for six, eh, it can just go away in a day. And something that uh, doesn't further a narrative, we can just all, you know, um, wipe it clean and move on. Because the the last thing that uh, this regime needs in an election year is a uh, black swan event of uh, terrorists committing acts uh, that uh, could have been stopped if we had any form of a secure border or immigration system whatsoever. I don't know that that's what happened here. I have no idea what's happened here because sure. they haven't told us anything. That's what's happened here. But we are living in an environment where, do you disagree with me? I doubt you do, that... That level of narrative pushing is absolutely capable in today's media. I mean, Steve, we had forget about the vaccines for a minute. You know, the cancers, the deaths, the millions of deaths, the virus. I mean, we're told that was the worst thing ever. It was the worst event in probably human history in many respects in terms of its short term, long term magnitude. The virus itself, we still have not gotten to the bottom of it. Okay, we're still funding this. There's still a bunch of labs that are creating stuff like this. They're warning about disease X, which how would they know is going to come? Um, it's like we we have these earth shattering catalyzing events and there's no follow up on the basic what, where, when, who, why. Mm -hmm. it, it's this new, just exhausting saturation where we just go from one to another. And and look, you know, everyone's and the truth have, is basically in, is inaccessible in most cases or even not even attempt we're not even attempting to access it we're just moving on to the next thing i mean i i've i've made this analogy before you know i'll use it, but not with you um if if we had even even if if we had the pentagon when i was growing up come out and claim that aliens and ufo's were real when i was growing up in 1984 everything in america would have stopped right there yep. literally everything everything would have stopped OK, now it's just like, eh, you know, I mean, when, you know, when new new episodes of uh, Bridgerton or uh, Tiger King drop on Netflix and we just all move on. OK, you know, I mean, so so that's kind of the era that we're in is it's like we just don't even care about what is or isn't yep. true. I mean, I mean, this would have been like a Princess Diana situation. Mm -hmm. That was at least a full week. Um, of like the world stopped. Nothing ever stops anymore, no matter what happens. And there's no pondering. There's no, you know, look, everyone's going to have their pre-planned policy prescription of what they want every time. And they'll use something, but you know, j j I'll just say this. I don't know what happened, but I do know going forward that everyone agrees it will take years to build a bridge. So that alone how is it that did you did you know Steve we have we hold 42% of global governance debt so it's about 82 trillion in global governance debt of all governments added up we have about 42% of it how is it that we can't build stuff i mean you know it's kind of eerie i i made the case I'm 14 miles away. My entire street has been full all week of like 30 construction workers from the county rebuilding the curbs. There's nothing wrong with the curbs. They just replace them mm -hmm. just because they got like a pot of money, I guess, from the feds and they just do. It's like we don't have money for basic things. And I think 
that that's what you started out with basic infrastructure contingencies because we're so busy with narrative we're so busy with agenda mm-hmm. that nothing matters but then we don't have an opposition movement to actually slow things down and harness the moment i mean this is why so many of us wanted a government shutdown maybe that wouldn't have even triggered a national focus but usually they go crazy over it where we could actually slow things down like hey wait a minute we, we kind of have an invasion, a bunch of sex offenders and rapists and gangbangers and terrorists coming in. You know, maybe we're going to finally have a knockdown drag out fight, but it just the world goes on. Mm-hmm. And then the fake controlled opposition, a.k.a. the conservative industry, just kind of mirrors that. They'll have one day talking point on that. Okay, we move on to the next thing. But all the while, well, that's because we don't we don't have our own legitimate show. information gathering entity. So everything we do is a reaction to their narrative or an undo yep. an undoing of their narrative, which means we're also therefore slaves to their narrative. If if their narrative is not focused on a particular set of uh, inf- pieces of information, we have really no means by which to sustain that. We can do it, for, you know, like keep people like you and me can write about one study in a given day that they are ignoring about the poison poke, right? But we don't have the means by which of either acquiring or accumulating those studies day after day after day to drive a news cycle, right? And so their 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 narratives drive the news cycle too because we're often just responding to their content or and use or using their content to counter their narrative. No, exactly. I mean, but it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, you look at Florida, we could be passing civilization changing stuff where? every day where? and force them to react to us. Where where? Where is this? Yeah, the place, you know, they, 44 years ago they had a bridge collapse there, you know. Yeah, the place I the place <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I the, it would the, get rebuilt. The place I didn't visit a few days ago? Exactly. Before we let you go, I want to get your take on RFK Jr.'s running mate selection. And just to set it up, a a brief version of my own and let you agree or disagree, uh, I think it's an awful choice for him and his candidacy. I think he is basically, uh, she is the love child of uh, Thomas Eagleton and Marianne Williamson, a literal druid, literal. Um, He basically is now just marginalizing himself uh, as a Democrat protest candidate exclusively. Um, he, this is basically just a place for, you know, uh, progressives who hate big pharma to have somebody to vote for. And, you know, there are these kinds of people, but they typically live in places like California and Massachusetts where Shanahan and RFK Jr. are from. And OK, so I guess Biden wins by 15 instead of 25 in Massachusetts now. I think that if you wanted him to be a spoiler candidate, this is actually not good news. Democrats are far less inclined to, quote unquote, waste votes on off party yep. candidates, uh, particularly in battleground states. We don't even know which, which of those states will even be on the ballot for yet. Um, you actually, I think, wanted him to be seen more as a unifying third party force where he takes some from Trump, but mostly from Biden, just enough from Trump that they can't really focus all of their efforts on the other side on him. Now, this is very clearly just a Ralph Nader redux from 2000. And I think they're going to unload on him. I think every woman he ever slept with, if he ever paid a girl to have an abortion back in the day, you're going to hear about her. I mean, I think they're going to make him think his name is Donald Trump here in the next 90 to 120 days. That's my take. What's yours? Steve, a person cannot rise above his character. Okay? I I think this is something we all need to understand and we seem to forget. Now, you could have character and be a bad leader, but you cannot rise above character flaws. And as much as once in a while this guy sounds presidential and serious like he cares, I mean, he did have a wild life, and I think he still is that person. I think he may, he's he been making himself irrelevant, frankly, before this. Uh, he's not been forging kind of a Perot-like vision. Mm-hmm. Th- th- there is never a better time to do that than now. I mean, that's all clear with the polling numbers being so low for both Trump and Biden. Uh, you know, someone would be, the, the public would be, totally prepared for someone to come up against cultural Marxism, maybe a little bit of economic populism here and there. Um, 30 seconds go. Yeah. That's the exact opposite of the cultural Marxism. He just selected bottom line is Chris Rufo just put this out on Twitter. We have a problem on the right, but I think it means this sort of dissident left as well. The economics of online discourse are increasingly at odds with forming and mobilizing a successful 
political movement. That's very correct. Good to see you again, my friend, or not see you, but hear from you at least. Thank you. Take care. See you next week. You bet. Daniel brought to you by Backyard Butchers, a Christian conservative Texas-based company dedicated to delivering the best deals in the market on high-quality beef. If you get a box from them, your box will include all born and raised American beef with ranch from ranches right here in the heartland. They're outstanding. I've had some of this meat. It's phenomenal. Grass-fed and grass-finished. The meat tastes amazing. Only source beef and chicken from American Farms delivering the cuts right to your doorstep every single month. So get out of the frustration of the meat aisle at the store and get in with Backyard Butchers right now. Uh, use the code DACE when you subscribe and get an additional 10% off at BackyardButchers.com. That's BackyardButchers.com. Use the code DACE to get 10% off and free shipping as well. When you subscribe, you get an additional 10% off too. All right, so you don't beat you can't beat that. Free shipping, an additional 10% off if you subscribe, and 10% off to get started if you use the code DACE at backyardbutchers.com slash dace. Backyardbutchers.com slash dace. We're gonna stick around and finish by seller hold in the overtime for the rest of you. We will see you tomorrow. Until then, Romans 828.